Hello, and welcome to People Keep Dying, a podcast about people who die. My name is Angela, and my guest today is my brother-in-law, Chris. Hello. Because I'm grabbing everyone I possibly could think of to be on my podcast, so I don't have to talk to myself. Just the coolest people. Yeah, sure. So your girlfriend was here last week or week before, depending on how I'm releasing this. And and I have been choosing stories that are a little bit more directed towards what your interests would be. So I chose a satanic ritual one because I thought that like it would speak to your high school Chris. And my adult Chris, really. Well, yeah, but I mean, high school Chris is way more gothic than he is. Absolutely. You are now because you're not now you're working and you're. You know, you're a boring adult. I'm an adult ish. Yeah. So, this is going to happen in the US because obviously most murders happen in the US, most of the ones that are really disgusting. But um, yeah, all right, I'm going to go. So, Krista Gale Pike was born on March 10th, 1976, in West Virginia. Krista's childhood was troubled with both of her parents basically abandoning her. Her mom was a drug addict, and her dad was like, I don't want to fucking deal with you. And then, so she was raised by a grandmother. So it's not surprising when she dropped out of high school because she wasn't doing really well. So she's a serial killer because all serial killers are raised by She's not a serial killer. Wow. Okay. But I'm just saying that she did drop out of high school. And it's it just when everything happens later in the trials, everyone in her family that she didn't, she never talked to comes out. Oh, well, because her mom did drugs, weed. And, you know, it's the dumb excuses because lots of people grow up uh, yep. in shitty you know, foster care even, and they're, they don't try to be serial well, killers or murderers. Most? Would you say most? I, say. I, I normally know, like, three people came out of foster oh, okay. care, and none of them are murderers that I'm aware of. Right. But we'll have to talk so to your brother, Brandon, about that and see if, you know, his friend turned out to be. We'll yeah. ask Jesse if he's a serial killer. He's probably a serial killer. <laughs> yeah, so. we'll, 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 I'll have him on the next episode and be like, are you a serial killer? <laughs> that's a great idea. And also, her last name is Pike, so, I mean, that's... You yeah, know, kind of sounds like Spike, so she's probably. I terrible. mean, it's the same last name as that one author that I read in my childhood called Christopher Pike. Oh, right. And didn't he write horror movies? Uh, a novels? lot of horror books yeah. as well. See. So it's really hot it's... here. So she joined the Job Corps, which is a government program aimed at helping low income youth by offering vocational training and career skills located in Knoxville, Tennessee. And it's basically like if you don't do really well, they want to make sure that you are still a viable adult when you grow up and you can actually work. During this time is when she met Tadaryl Ship, a man one year her junior. And I don't know why like every article wrote about it, but I think it's because she was 18 and he was 17. So wow, whole year. Scandalous because she's like legal year. and he's not. It's one year. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not. It's, so together, they developed an interest in the cult and devil worship, which is nothing. That's so, normal, like high school kids. Yeah. So I'm not really did sure. They also listen, when, when did this happen? Like what year? In um, 1995. So they were listening to Marilyn Manson, basically. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't that big of a deal, but for some reason, they thought they should mention it. On January 11th, 1995, Krista told her friend that Kim Iloilo that she was planning to kill someone. Like, she just felt like killing someone. Right, as you do. Yeah. Right. And it's because she's seen this girl named Colleen Slemmer, who was a fellow trainee at the Job Corps, and she was convinced that Colleen was flirting with, with Tadaro, and she was trying to steal him away, and that bitch trying to steal my man kind yeah. of, you know, bullshit. So that particular day, it felt right. As she told Kim, I just felt mean that day. So Kim, of course, disregarded the comment, assuming it's just all talk, because that's how teenagers talk. Like, they say, I'm going to go kill someone, and you yeah. don't assume they're actually going to. Or else the cops were really busy with all these phone calls. Like, Absolutely. oh, my teenager said that they're going to kill her teacher. For and this is before them. the internet, so, I mean, yeah. everyone says they're going to kill everyone on the internet now. Yeah, because there's nothing to do, I guess, then Was either. Was she in a small town? She wa Well, Knoxville isn't, isn't a small town. It's just that Knoxville is a pretty, like, it's like, like, a, it's like this kind of city. Okay. It's not a big city, right. but it's a city. So, however, the next day, Kim saw Krista Colleen to Daryl and Shadola Peterson lead the center. And two hours later, saw everyone but Colleen come back. But she didn't really think much of it because, you, you know, like maybe Colleen went to go meet friends. Like, you don't think anything about yeah, it. And so she didn't report just it. Just do random stuff. So, yeah. yeah. So Krista and her accomplices lured Colleen to an isolated, abandoned steam plant near the University of Tennessee. 
All four of them signed out of the dormitory where Colleen was told that they wanted to make peace and offered her some weed. Like they're going to go to Blockbuster, rent a movie. And you're like, hey, I have some weed. You want to go like smoke it? And then, you know, it's friend stuff. So you don't. Blockbuster and chill. Yeah. Yeah. So when they arrived to the location, Colleen was immediately attacked by Krista and to Daryl while Shadola acted as their lookout. So Shadola wasn't a part of it, but she was. So there was four people that ganged up on four, this? Three people. Oh, to Daryl okay. and Krista ganged up on Colleen, but Shadola is the one who right. like held okay. the flashlight, was part of it, but didn't touch her. So it's right. kind of a gray area. She's so, an accomplice, for sure. For the last 30 minutes of Colleen's life, Krista and Tadaryl relentlessly and unremorsefully taunted, beat, and slashed Colleen. Because during this meetup, Krista took with her a meat cleaver and box oh cutter, but said that they only meant to scare her. If you're only trying to scare someone, three of you is enough to scare one person. Yeah, especially you, with just maybe even a box cutter. You don't yeah. need the cleaver. The That's meat a bit cleaver excessive. is excessive, but I, from what I was reading, it was like a small one, but still, oh, okay. still. enough to do a lot of damage. Let's just yeah. say that. So Krista used the meat cleaver to cut Colleen's back and cut her throat six times with the box cutter. Oh my God, once should have been enough. It was pretty excessive. And Colleen tried to fight back, like fight for her life and escape. And at first she was like, I'm gonna report you guys if you don't leave me alone right now. But then as soon as she realized that that's not gonna work, she started bargaining with her life and saying, if you just stop right now, I'll hitchhike back home to Florida. I won't even go back to the job corp to get the rest of my stuff. I'm just like, right. she please just, just let me go. Yeah. yeah. But of course, it's not going to work out for her. Were they saying like hail Satan the whole time? No, but um, the pentagram carved into her chest and forehead is the reason why they kind of connected this to the occult. Yeah, just a little bit of just a connection. Just a little bit. So the more Colleen talked, the more Krista became agitated because, quote, it was harder to hurt somebody when they're talking to you. And uh, yeah, because you realize they're a human, human being, being that you're murdering. It, but I think that's why she kept slicing her throat in the hopes that she would stop talking. And yeah, yeah she will. That also she'll works stop too. Breathing. If you kill someone, yeah. then yeah, also works. Yep. So shut them up real quick. Krista told Colleen that she was going to die and ended Colleen's life by smashing her skull with a large chunk of asphalt, killing her. But that wasn't the worst part because as a trophy, Krista kept a piece of Colleen's skull in her pocket. Well, you got to keep something. Yeah, right? as basically, I want to remember this terrible moment. Yeah, because you know you often forget your murders and yeah. that are brutally done. Well, if this done. is the first one and she's going to the second one, you might start forgetting them after sure, a while. Sure, sure. You know, but she obviously gets caught because we know her name. <laughs> so when Krista returned to the dorm, she went to see Kim at around 11 p.m. because she got to the dorm around nine, and around 11 is when she went to go see Kim, and she told her about the murder. She was rather proud and showed her a piece of Colleen's skull. Yeah, that's the first mistake. You never tell anyone. Well, it's not like they did. She, she didn't report her, so that's not okay. anything. So I think Good it's because friends, I, guess. I think like, at the job corps, you're always like disenfranchised youth. So you what just, is the job course? Like, what? It's for poor people who couldn't do really well. So like, like they just they give go, you like a temporary they help job. You, um, I guess like they help you get jobs and they also okay. help you get, gain like skills to get jobs. Oh, so, it's like, so it is like a school, yeah. but you also get jobs. Yeah. And it's usually for people who are from a low income. Okay. Like, okay. So yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So as Krista danced around in a circle, singing and smiling, she recounted in a horrifying detail how she forced Colleen to remove her shirt and bra and beat her as well as carving the pentagrams into her chest was this, and forehead. And this was like before she was murdered, I assume? No, this was after she murdered her. She went to Kim and started telling her all about the murder. No, but I mean like the, her telling her to remove her clothes and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. This was like during the murder part. Right, like it wasn't like... Colleen yeah. To, yeah. Okay. So, I, th I thought they carved it after death, but no, like no, she's was, still she alive, alive when she, they're carving she was still a pentagram. alive when oh they God. carved everything into her, yeah. Beautiful. So the next day, Crystal told another student, Stephanie Wilson, about the murder, pointing down at the brown spots on her shoes, saying, Daddy and blood on my shoes, that's blood. What? Krista's obviously like unstable because I don't Wait, feel like really? normal people do this. You don't first think so? Of all. You know, mm. And if you were a little bit more stable, you probably wouldn't have told anyone. Exactly. If she was so, an actual like sociopath, yeah. she would have just kept it hidden, and just the two, pe the three people that were there would know. Yeah, right? but then no, she she had to brag about it. She had to brag about it. Like she had to show idiot. everyone. And she was she was a seventeen year old, not the eighteen year old. Eighteen. She oh, was she was eighteen. 18. Okay. And her boyfriend, was the whatever. Yeah, yeah, was seventeen. She showed Stephanie the piece of skull and told Stephanie about how Colleen's blood and brains had been pouring out 
and then she picked up the piece of skull when she left the scene. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. don't. But then at breakfast, when Kim asked Krista about the piece of skull she had shown her the day before, she replied that it was in her pocket. And yes, I'm eating breakfast with it. Like she was really proud of it. Of course she is. She's, yeah. She's hardcore. Like, you know. But neither Stephanie or Kim immediately reported the incident to the police because they're probably afraid for they're their scared. life. Like, like I, this girl carries around a piece of someone's skull. Yeah, she's clearly insane. Yeah. So when you report her, you're also dead. Yeah. That's probably their thinking, right? But it fortunately wasn't long before Colleen's body was found because it was next to the University of Tennessee and there's groundskeepers right. there. So on January 13th, the next day at 8.05 a.m., an employee of the University of Tennessee grounds department discovered Colleen's semi-nude slash badly beaten body near the greenhouses of the agricultural campus. The body was so badly beaten that the employee had originally mistaken it as an animal corpse. Ugh, like they, they didn't even look human. They destroyed it. They destroyed it. So they must have just hit her more than once on the head, right? Like that's that's I think like, it's because they slashed it so slashed her body. Right, open but so many they would times. have had to like use the asphalt to like destroy yeah. her body as well, not just her head. Like that's to get that bad. Like, yeah, and like from what other articles I read, after she smashed her head with the asphalt, the asphalt had broken because I think like the skull is a little bit harder than the asphalt. It's just so overkill. Literally, like. Yeah, just. But anyways, um, it was only during closer inspection that he saw Colleen's clothes and her breasts, and that's when he realized that that's a person. So then he called the law enforcement agents. Since four people so. signed out, including Colleen, but only three people signed back in, the suspects were easily apprehended within 36 hours of the murder. Yeah. Fortunately. But the police found a piece of skull in Krista's pocket, so she wasn't lying about it. <laughs> and a copy of the Satanic Bible was found in Daryl's room, which isn't, I feel like a lot of teenagers back then um, were kind of obsessed with like the whole Mary, I had like the, the Satanic Bible. Yeah, like, Charles Manson thing. And sure. people just, just because they find it interesting doesn't But when really, you connect the dot, like it's yeah. all the pieces and together. All like, the, and then on top of that, drawing the pentagram on the body. Yeah, yeah exactly. Was when you're like, it. this was like kind I don't know if it was a ritual, but she just wanted to be cool, it to probably, connect like, or something. Yeah. She probably just read the Satanic Bible. Was like, there's a pentagram. This is cool. This is cool. Let's do it. Yeah. So Krista insisted that they're just trying to scare her. And then it got out of control. But obviously, like, how does it get doubt out of control? You hit someone and then they fall and smash her head on the ground. That's right. like, oh shit. There's yeah. definitely some deep seated issues where she just had a bloodlust. Like, yeah. So 30 up. minutes of beating yeah. someone is not just going out of control. So it was during an interview with the police that she confessed to the murder, which was transcribed in a 46 page long thing. Like she talked about this. Oh, well, she really was long time. clearly proud. Like, obviously. Right? Yeah. So. She had a lot of descriptions that unfortunately those police officers have to listen to. Yeah. So they probably just wanted like, how do you like listen to something like that and then not want to immediately like take out your gun and just be like, let's end this creature. You can't. <laughs> I know. No, That's, I mean, but, no, I mean, but I mean like you can't because you, you also see, she sees like she's kind of unstable. Yeah, so you don't really know health, right? how much of it is what Insanity. she thought and what she actually did. Right. But from what it sounds like, she actually did it, which is probably the worst. Well, she has her boyfriend there to corroborate. Yeah. And I'm not really sure how much to Daryl said, but. Okay. Shadola is the one who turned into an informant and she ended up receiving probation for pleading guilty for being an accessory to murder, mm -hmm. but she didn't have to go to jail for it. But Krista was sentenced to death by electrocution on March 22nd, 1996. And Todaro received a life sentence with the possibility of parole. So I'm not sure if Todaro is out of jail or not, but I'm not, I don't think he should be either. You know, yeah. you're still you still beat like a I, girl. Well, how much like how much did he actually do? That's why does, does it say how much he actually attributed? Like, did he cut her throat? Did he like hit I, her with the asphalt? What was his part in that? I think Krista took a lot of it, saying that she did it all. Yeah. but it's hard to know if she actually did. Well, because... I mean, I feel like. You know, like, I don't know if you see how insane she is. And then you realize, like, she definitely probably did do all that. Yeah. He, maybe he, like, hit the girl once. Well, but then I know like, Krista left to, like, because she thought she heard something. To Daryl's the one who, like, grabbed her and forced her back, you know. Because she tried to escape a couple of times. And if it was just Krista versus Colleen, yeah. Chris, like, Colleen could have possibly possibly, like, escaped and right. not died. But because to Daryl and Shadol was there, that's the reason why Colleen died. Because it's, yeah. like, one-on-one -on -one fights. Oh yeah, it's even. Yeah. yeah, so you might be able to. Well, escape. she kind of she had the weapons though, so that's yeah. Be but huge. I mean, if you're like trying to run and you can actually run, then maybe. Yeah. Yeah, 
but having to look at and everything else is totally. I'm just curious if like he went into this. To Daryl was his name. To Daryl, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if he went into it thinking like, yeah, this is gonna be fun. Like, let's scare you know, yeah. rough her up a bit, and then like if he you just got out of control, he just well, I, I think or if like, he felt the same as uh, the main girl there, that Krista. Krista, yeah, if he felt the same, where he's like, oh, if I let's just you know ruin her life. It's hard to know because no one really talks about him. Okay. Everyone kind of focuses so on her. Because, maybe she just took all, like you said, she took all the credit. Yeah, and on top of that, like she's kind of pretty, so it's kind of like a really good story. Yeah. Like, this girl yeah. turned to Satan and then killed someone and right. sacrificed her. And there was a guy there, and you probably did half of yeah, it. Yeah, but, but you know, you just, know, it was this girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was this pretty white girl that satanic ritual right you know, that's just it yeah. that that story is great so after being in jail for a bit krista wrote to her boyfriend and i'm assuming it's to daryl but who knows she might have a boyfriend on the outside right um you see what i get for trying to be nice to the hoe i went ahead and bashed her brains out so she died quickly instead of letting her bleed death and suffer more and that they need fucking fry me ain't that some shit that is some shit yeah yeah you fucked up so Fuck. Crystal tried to get the verdict appealed in June 2001 and again in 2002, but it didn't work. No. She's, she's still no. up for it. It yeah. didn't help that in between that time on August 24, 2001, Krista and Natasha Cornette, another murdering self-proclaimed Satan worshiper, which somehow they ended up, you know, in the same like block or something together. This is women's prison, right? Yeah. There's not in that area, probably not many. But still, like, two Satan worshiping yeah. murderers. In, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, there, is there specific blocks, like a murderer's block? Probably any? for more serious crimes, there right. is a block. So but maybe I mean, the Satan probability of being Satanist. I uh, don't know. Yeah. But they attacked a fellow prisoner, Patricia Jones, and nearly strangled, strangled her to death with a shoelace. Wow. And this, yeah, there goes your parole or anything. <sighs> They were placed together in a holding cell during a fire alarm. And that's why, like, they were even in the cell to begin with, because they weren't roommate, bunkmates or oh, anything. Oh, okay. So just coincidence. Yeah, and they didn't really say, like, why they targeted Patricia, but whatever. So Krista was given an additional 25 years for her sentence for attempted murder, but she's already going to be in jail. She's already on death row. But she has to lose. Yeah, she's on death row. Like They just keep adding. Like, what's the point? Exactly. Just the, take, just give, like, put her in a cell somewhere and just... Get her on the electric chair. Well, the, on the electric execution date was set for August 19, 2002. Mm -hmm. But on August 2, 2002, three judges, three judge state appeal court panel ruled that the proceedings should be continued and the execution was not carried out. And that's usually how what? it is. Why? They just never really execute anyone on death row. It's really dumb. I don't even see the point of yeah, saying, like, like, you're literally. on death row. You're not going to die. You just like, you're okay. in jail forever. Like, I get it. just, I guess, stressed out about potentially dying there like that's dumb why yeah why even have it then if you're gonna do that i don't know but in march 2012 krista was found to have made escape plans with corrections officer justin heflin and new jersey man donald cohot i guess you, you have nothing to lose why not well, yeah, try to course. escape you're gonna you're on death row you're never gonna get in prison yeah. and you can use your feminine wiles to absolutely get this guy to do stuff for you i mean that's why it never made sense to have male prison guards at all like i know that obviously the female prison guards are less likely yeah but you got to find a way because that's there's so many times it like, happens too often yeah. there's, there, i think especially if you're just, an attractive female like yeah you, there should just be a lot of cameras and if there's a ton of cameras and you but have like always, body cams on you and yeah. everything well recorded, the body cam is that would yeah. make a difference because then you would, people would see it and be yep. like, what are you doing flirting with this? If they flirt to you, you'd be an asshole back and be like, no. And that's yeah, it. Yeah, I'm Shut sure it down. Like, more than half of them do that. But there's always going to be the quarter yeah, of that them one that are like, oh, well, yeah. fuck this chick. Like, yeah. it, sure, why not? And it, you read about it a lot like with attempted like escape plans and stuff. But yeah. I did read about a woman who helped a man escape as well. And I'm like, why is the woman in the male prison? It became a game, same idea, right? Like it's just yeah. to have same same gender prison guards as the prison they're in. Who are not influenced by their own. Yeah, right, exactly. I, now, who knows? I guess it's one of those things like who knows? So did you read that 46 page like or any of the, the her group? I read her court proceedings, like her um, like the very brief like court proceedings that happened. Like there was like this, like this is a section of this and it explains like what this person said. They didn't read but the gory the details. They of... didn't have it available. Oh, okay. I, they never they never have those available. I thought that was public record. No, not all of it. Some of it's sealed. Oh, OK. You don't want like I'm pretty sure Colleen's family is like, I don't want it. Well, yeah, to come out. I guess it's that's... already bad enough listening to that part. Yeah. So. Um, the plans were thwarted by the Joint Investigations of the Tennessee Department of Corrections, the Tennessee Bureau of 
of investigation and the New Jersey State Police because the other guy was from New Jersey. And as of May 2014, no execution date has been set. And from as far as I know, she's still alive. So she's still alive in prison, just like chilling. I think, yeah, I think like she's the youngest woman um, to be sent you know, for well, cause she was 18 row. at the time, yeah. like how you can't really be younger. I mean, and yeah, because if you're 17, then you fall as, as a child, right? Yeah, as a but I don't think there's any other girls who are even close to her age, like maybe in her 20s. Yeah. But yeah, for the most part, no one's usually guys take the cake for being this crazy, which is why I think I usually cover women because they're so rare. It is very rare. And that's why I also cover Asian murders because even also more rare. rare. Yeah, yeah. The weird part is that you can actually find memor murderabilia, which is memorabilia mm -hmm. by murderers full of stuff from her, like letters she wrote to people, personal pictures with her signature in the back of it. And I think like that's course, how she's making she's, money in prison. Of and I'm course, like, she's she shouldn't so, be allowed to, first of so all. She's so egotistical. She thinks she's like hot shit that like, oh my God, like I fucked this girl up so hard. I mean, and... And like, I got it. She essentially got away with it because she's still alive, right? Yeah. Like, and I, I'm pretty sure she's bipolar. Like someone should have definitely gone her checked a long oh, yeah. time ago. Oh, well, yeah. How but, does she not have like an insanity plea or something? Like how does that happen where... Because you have to seem... Like I think for insanity, it's really hard to do an insanity plea. But, I mean, she's... Like if you're a good I think, lawyer... I don't think... She, I think she's of sound mind. She's just, just something wrong with her. Right. But... You get to be of sound mind. I think anytime there's a serial killer, they're never really. Yeah, that's what I don't. Quite... You can always look for something. Well, but... I guess the insanity thing is it's not a consistent, right? Yeah. Like it's in that moment you were insane. Yeah. Like you're you, not an like, insane person yeah. overall. You broke out of in, like reality at that moment, right, right? Or you're actually like schizophrenic, like you're insane. And the and fact that she no kept way. bragging about it even to the police, yeah, is gives credence to the fact that she was of sound mind. Yeah. Like at that and then point. That she actually knew what she was she doing. She didn't regret worse. her actions yeah. clearly. She was excited about it. Like, I mean, she really just had like big bloodlust, and that's why she was. It's all really, grandma's fault. Yeah. For, yeah. For, it's her parents' fault, obviously, and the weed that she did with her mom, apparently. Which oh, is, yeah, that's the. That's what her aunt was saying in court. Like, mm. oh, well, it's because she grew up with bad parents. And I'm like, it's not, that's not the reason. I mean, it, that is partially if she did have bad parents. Like, weed is not an indicator of bad parents. No, but, but I mean, maybe her parents were but actually. But you can have bad parents and not be a murderer. You can, but it increases your likeliness. Yeah. Because yeah. it's if you learned body, behavior. Yeah. Like, if you're, both parents had anger issues, then she's going to learn that. Yeah. And Lots of people have that and they don't end up murdering Again, people. if you have the capability already inside you and, and you have bad parents, yeah. like you combine these features, right? Like, it's not, it's not just one thing. Like, obviously, bad parents are not the only factor, but... Yeah, I think a psychiatrist said that she might have bipolar disorder, yeah. which I would believe. Sure. But someone also said that she had like an IQ of 111, almost a genius or a genius level. Mm. I don't really know where you got that. Yeah. But you can't really tell from the way she speaks because she's from Tennessee and that's how they all speak. Right. So it's unfair to be like, well, it's because she speaks this way. Well, and, like, her, well, and her inability to cleverly hide the fact that she murdered somebody yes. doesn't really speak to her intelligence. But maybe she's just clever in different ways. I don't know. Uh, Who knows? I, I'm not really sure how to even gauge. Yeah, like I would have to see a source. I would have to see a gauge of like how they figure out what your IQ is, first of all. Right. And then secondly, like why they would think that. And there's so many her. critics of IQ tests anyway that yeah. it's, it just doesn't mean anything. Like you can have 120, great. But what, what scale, what, what yeah. gauge, like what, you know, so great. So and it, it always feels like the smarter you are in something, then you're lacking in another thing. Sure. So of course. Yeah. yeah it's usually communication. Like you lack a lot of communication skills, yeah. which. She doesn't really seem like she had, but who knows? Yeah, so she's messed up. And did she like? Do you remember if she said anything about like Satanism specifically in no, her? No, she court just case? talked about how she how she was interested in the satanic rituals right. and occult and stuff like that, but nothing about why. I think she just liked the pentagram. Like I honestly don't think it had anything to do with Satan. I think she right. just saw the pentagram. It's like that's really cool. Let's just. Draw it's got to be because I mean the most popular satanic Bible, Anton Lavey, has nothing to do with murdering or no, anything like that. There's but, no there's no human sacrifice even detailed in any of the rituals. So. But I mean, like people always misconstrue everything, but, right? Uh, so like she like it would just be like she bought it, didn't read it, and was like, "That's got to be." But I think like know. someone said that either her or Tadaro read it like a hundred times. Then they again didn't understand anything in it. There's literally nothing in there that would describe the actions that she took. So wow. that's what they always they want to blame Satan. They, yeah, that's what yeah. they do. Right? But I mean, if there is, but I'm just saying it could have been yeah. a different satanic Bible. Yeah, I'm that not is really not sure. the more popular one. Yeah. So they right. didn't really specify that you just said satanic Bible. And I think right. like they just assume like that's it. But anyways, thank you for being on my podcast. You're and welcome. I'm saving the other satanic 
um, murder for you for next time. Nice. Can't wait. Um, and thank you to my listeners. And I'd like to thank um, all the other podcasts that have been helping me get through this transition period. It's been kind of difficult for me. So thank you very much. And hopefully you're not dead next time and you can listen to the next episode. Yeah, you can alive. find us on all or me on all social medias except Snapchat. And you can email me at peoplekeepdying at gmail.com if there's a murder you'd like me to cover. Or if you'd like to say something, because, you know, if there's like, I don't know, you want to be in this podcast and you want to talk to me, that's cool too. So 